Hello. Yes? Yes? Sweet mother of double jeopardy packs stroking in butterscotch. We're on our way. Who was it? The Girl Scouts lawyers again? That was the commissioner. You will never guess which unduly famous TV personality made the most wanted criminals list this week. Phyllis Diller? Gavin McCloud? Wink Martindale? Close. Myra Stump, the darling hawk of daytime talk. Myra? As in America's mom? The woman who told Tom Hanks to get a haircut? Surely you jest. She's holding her audience hostage and giving them valuable gifts against their collective will. I don't normally endorse the use of the word dastardly, but this is clearly dastardly. I think. We've got to drive over to the station right away, or at our earliest convenience. Great! I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. Sam, it's me. Open the window. I'm trapped in the ledge again. Sam, come on! I have to pee! And the PTA is here, and they're carrying signs! I found a way to solve all three of my problems at once. But I'm going to be needing bail. Hi Sam, this is your therapist calling. I have to cancel our appointment because I'm giving up the practice to go into publishing. Speaking of which, thanks for all your great material. Welcome back America to day three and a half of my most special episode ever. You don't want to miss any of our exciting guests coming up this hour. Plus, everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non-dairy creamer! We don't need non-dairy creamer. We need sleep. Oh, I see. You were all thrilled when I gave you cars, then all expense paid vacations, and then home entertainment centers. But now, after I worked so hard and sacrificed so much, you'd rather sleep. It's all about you, isn't it? I guess nothing I ever do is good enough for you. Maybe. Maybe we'll start using non-dairy creamer... someday. That's more like it. You see? There's lots more fun to come, so stick around, America, and sit up straight. Nobody trusts a sloucher. Good old TV. It's the only way I still feel well-adjusted. Ah, uh, Brady Culture's hair. It makes for an unwieldy but oh-so-enchanting memento of our first case in a long while. He howled like a sick wallaby when I shaved it off him. Good times. Alien Love Triangle Times. Looks like they're sold out. Has been Brady Culture behind bars. He finally found a way to become famous. The police blotter. It looks like candy, but I'm pretty sure it's fish tank gravel again. I've had worse. What the? You're probably wondering how I know your names. Not really. Psst. It's me, Bosco. What's with the slanted suit strainer, Bosco? Bosco? I know not that moniker. I am Lord Reginald Rumplebottom, Earl of Dukedom, the third. Sam, what language is he speaking? I'm not sure, Max, but I think it might be English. No, really. What made you convert to British? It's because everybody's got an in for me, that's why! Yeah, we heard. I had to get a disguise to throw them off the trail. Oh, they'll never find me now. They wouldn't even know where to begin to look. Clever clogs! What sick forces of evil are bedeviling you this time? It's the skin bodies, man! They're after me! Skin bodies? 
Sounds like a pack of belligerent nudists. Oh no. The skin bodies are like skinheads, but ten times worse! Sure they're not a hundred times worse? Yeah, maybe a hundred times, maybe a million! These skin bodies, what exactly are they doing to you? They're stealing my, I mean, pinching, my shaving cream! Of all the things of yours they could pinch, why the shaving cream? So they can shave their bodies, of course. Of course. Not to be rude, but why isn't your fancy pants defense system stopping these skin bodies? Well, after the whole video delivery conspiracy, I figured I better build something to keep people from bringing stuff into my store. So? So, I needed to borrow some of the high-tech detecting parts from b -Tag. Meaning nothing's stopping people from taking stuff out of the store anymore. Dash it all! I knew I forgot something! Hands in the air, Bosco. You're coming with us. Good heavens! What is the meaning of this? We're taking you in for masquerading as a man of class and distinction. What the devil? Surely you jest. Yes, surely we do. On the bright side, now you can add the police to your long list of paranoia-induced nightmare subjects. Piss off! Piss off! Piss off. We want to buy something. Mm, yes, mm, uh, quite so, quite so. Do you have any complimentary fresh garlic? No. Do you have any fine leather jackets? No. Do you have any gumballs the size of your head? No. Do you have any plus two plate armor of limitless squeezability? No. Do you have any Pez dispensers with the head of infamous Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa? No. Do you have any ketchup? No. Uh, oh, wait. Got you. Blast. Drat. Dash it all. What have you got? Well, there is still one kind of shaving cream the blooming skin bodies haven't got yet. Oh, yeah, I love shaving. That's funny. I've never seen you shave. I didn't mean myself. And I have a most peculiar device behind the counter. What peculiar device are you so eager to pawn off on us this time? It's the latest in Bosco Tech innovation. A delightful invention I like to call a chemical-based voice modulator. Voice modulator? What's that? I do believe it's self-explanatory. We don't really have time to explain it to ourselves. Why don't you just explain it to us? Well, it alters the frequency of your voice molecule. Very useful, very useful. We'd like that voice modulator. That will be 30 shillings. Yeah, I left our shillings in my other pants. How much in dollars? Let's see. Uh, 30 shillings would be about 1 million American dollars. A million bucks? No way are we giving out that many tickets. I think we'll have to find an entirely new revenue stream if we want that voice modulator. Worth every shilling, trust me, trust me. Nothing for us right now. Indeed. Thanks, Bosco. Pip pip, honey nut cherry. What do we have here? Organ Trader, Self Loathing Weekly, Hot Bunny. Oh, let me see that. Hot Bunny? No, Self Loathing Weekly. Whip liver worse. Want some? Absolutely not. Sludgies. This week's flavors, bangers and mash. That's sausages and potatoes to you yanks. Oh good. For a second I thought it was something disgusting.
Can I play with that? No, it drives people crazy. Who? Me. Sam! Max! How nice to see you! I don't suppose you have any candid photos of little green men feeling frisky, do you? What? It's my new career! I'm a tabloid publisher specializing in the thoughtful analysis of groundbreaking news of interest to myself and others like me. What's it called? The Alien Love Triangle Times. So you're a publisher now? What happened to psychotherapy? I've always had a fascination with the suppressed and the sensual, and for telling people too much about both. Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times is a logical extension of all my previous careers. Except maybe Vatican spokesperson. Are you doing any psychotherapy on the side? Only on space aliens. I guess that narrows your clientele quite a bit. No, not really. What was it you said about a photo? My new tabloid, the Alien Love Triangle Times, needs a cover photo of an extraterrestrial biological entity, or alien as the unwashed masses calls them, caught getting cozy with some of the locals. Sybil, I'd like the record to show that although I support you as a friend, your latest project makes my skin decidedly crawly. Me too, and I like it! So, you're looking for a cover photo of little green men canoodling, right? Yeah, though I'm kind of desperate at this point. Basically, I can use anything as long as there are three beings in the shot and at least one of them's an alien. It is the Alien Love Triangle Times, after all. Got it. There's nothing like good, hard-nosed journalism. You said it! It's time to find out the real answers to the real questions. Like what did those poor cattle do to deserve that? No! What do aliens do for romance? Do they love? How do they get their otherworldly thrills? By playing slots in Kino? That'd explain why they're always seen in Nevada. Have you learned anything interesting since you started this, uh, magazine? I learned why Elvis had such an otherworldly voice. Elvis was not an alien. Sure he was. He just wore makeup to cover his emerald green skin. Frankly, Sybil, this project is disturbing, as well as distressingly intimate. Like seeing Stephen King getting a hot butter massage. Oh, you saw last week's issue. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Dr. Phil. Well, that goes without saying. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Yes. We'll be back. Keep watching the supplies. This appears to be some sort of reproductive device. It's a mimeograph. I use it to print my tabloid. I've got half a mind to stretch out for a little bit. I think you have to stretch the whole thing or it rips. You baffle me sometimes, Max. She's got a story here about two hygienists from Walla Walla and an amorphous Saturnian slime mold. Is that the one where they walk into a bar at the beginning? Laundromat. But you're close. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Well, here we are, Max. The TV station with programs too old to be contemporary, too new to be retro, but consistently derivative enough to be popular. WARP. Television so mindless, you can't help but watch. Oddly quiet in here. Mysteriously so. Well, let's find this Myra character and smack some good old-fashioned sense into her. I don't care if we smack it into her or smack it out of her, just so long as there's smacking involved. You crack me up, little buddy. There's only back there. But we're police. Yeah, I'm sure. 
Stand aside, casually attired stagehand. We're Sam and Max, freelance police. We've come to save some pathetic hostages from the clutches of... Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Number one, I'm not a stagehand. I am the director. The director! Could a fool... Number two, we're no longer holding the auditions for animal cops with crippling mental disabilities and a lust for dance. Oh no, we're not actors. You got that right. I don't think I've ever seen worse acting in my entire life. And yes, I have seen Keanu Reeves' performance in Toast, the musical. Sam, I think my hypersensitive ego may need stroking. Don't look at me. Next! Who's next? You don't seem to understand. We're highly untrained police officers. Look, hats off for dedication, guys, but I'm just not buying the police act. I feel so invalidated. We're looking for Myra Stump, the darling hawk of... Do not mention that name in my presence. Which name? Myra or Stump? Either and or both. What's your beef with Myra? Let's just say Myra and I have creative differences. I'm creative, and she isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your question? You and Myra, why the hate? Look, Myra runs her show her way, and I run every other show my way. If she doesn't want me on her set, I could care less. You mean you couldn't care less. If you could care less, then you do care some, which doesn't really... No, I was right. I could care less, because I care even less about what you're saying right now. Oh, burn! Quiet, knucklehead. What are you doing here, anyhow? What am I doing here? I'm holding auditions for Midtown Cowboys. What are you doing here? Midtown Cowboys? The critically panned but publicly adored sitcom about two cattle ranchers trying to make it in Midtown Manhattan? Yes, well summarized. You're hiring extras? No, I'm hiring the stars. The two main characters went on Myra a couple days ago, and I haven't heard from them since. I need replacements ASAP. Sam, did you hear that? If we can pass one lousy audition, sitcom stardom will finally be ours! Rocketing to fame for the most insubstantial of reasons. That truly is the American dream. We'd like to apply for that instant stardom you promised? You want to audition? Well, if there were anybody else here, I'd tell you to forget it, but okay. All right! What do we do? I'm going to have you play a scene from Old Geller. Tell me you've seen it. I'm not into horror movies. It's the classic boy gets dog, dog gets rabies, boy shoots dog story. Max, I want you to play the boy. Yes! Boy! That is so me! And Sam, you play the dog. Oh. Okay, Sam, ready? I need you to act like you've got full-blown rabies, understand? What's my motivation? You're a mad dog! Now, show me, Rabbit! Um... Grrr. No! Dig deep! You should be just... frothing mad! Hmm... Cut! What are you doing?! Sorry, I'm not hiring a dog who can't even do a simple rabidity scene! I don't know what went wrong. I was feeling so rabid. You look pretty disease-ridden to me! Come back after you've taken a few thousand acting lessons. I hope that's just a prop. I hope it isn't! Could use a shave. I'll say. Your five o'clock shadow goes clear to your ankles. Hard to eat, dog, pig dog. The skin bodies rule the street. Black, bugger, blimey, bollock. The little bladder did it again. After him, I mean. Tally ho, fool.
Where are we going, Sam? Hey! <laughs> the skin buddy sent me stuff! After those rats! Do those laughably small wheels move so fast? You'll never catch it! The skin body can't be stuck! Take the wheel, little buddy! I thought you'd never ask! Okay, hold on tight, little buddy. Mommy! Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Yes? Can we take another crack at that audition? Fine. Let's take it from the top. Ready, Sam? Show me rabbit. Cut! Quit stalling and act rabid. I don't know how I could be any more rabid. You have to be frothing at the mouth. Contract rabies if you have to, but don't come back until you can froth. Hello again. Yes? Can we take another crack at that audition? Fine. Let's take it from the top. Ready, Sam? Show me rabbit. Brilliant! Now that's what I call diseased. Thank you. Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank all the little people who... Zip it. Okay, Max. You just realized your dog is walking dead, and you'll have to put him down for the good of society. Really? You're sad! You're despondent! You're grief-stricken! Now! Show me the emotion! Uh, boo-hoo? You call that emotion? I've seen Myra show more emotion, and she ought to be declared a natural Botox reserve! Grief, I said! Give me grief! Uh... Now, the fateful moment has arrived. Despite your immense grief, you must put your beloved companion out of his misery. Okay! Uh-oh. Oh. Idiot! What demonic force possessed you to do that? The demonic force called acting, Sam. You should try it sometime. Good thing I had my anti-hypnosis helmet built into my head. Or I'd have one too many holes in the head. Bra Bravo! Such realism. Such authenticity. I was convinced you were actually shooting him. How did you do the sound effects? You don't want to know. The search for the Midtown Cowboys is over! Dora Hyde, head to the set next door and we can begin filming immediately. Let's hurry, Sam! We only have 14 minutes and 55 seconds of fame left! Alright, people, let's get the stage set up. The celebrity host will be here any minute. Oh, right. The crew's working on Myra. Stupid, no talent, fat face. Weren't you just... I think she just defied the laws of physics. Sorry, you'd be amazed how many times a day I have to do that. Things tend to be hectic here. Doesn't bother us a bit. Sam and Max, consummate professional actors, reporting for duty. <laughs> you said duty, Sam. I knew you guys were right for the show. Speaking of which, could you perhaps explain the show a bit? Okay, here's the drill. On Midtown Cowboys, you play a pair of cattle ranchers trying to raise a herd in an apartment in Manhattan. My Uncle Ernie did that, except it was pigs. 
And not in an apartment. I only see one cow. It's a small herd. You're struggling, okay? Okay. You've got this landlord, Mr. Featherly, who has a very strict no-cows policy. Devilishly inconvenient. I begin to see from whence the hilarity sprouts. Yes, Featherly is always barging in, and you try to hide the fact that you have a cow in the apartment. Lots of sight gags, usually something gross winds up happening. Simple enough? Great. Where's the script? Well, there's a slight hitch. The cow ate most of the script, so you're going to have to ad-lib the show. Ad-lib? Yes, make it up as you go. Improvise. Well, I guess our regular life has given us plenty of practice. Don't worry, you'll be working with Philo Pennyworth, who plays Featherly. He's a brilliant actor, classically trained. Globe Theater and all that. Just set him up to do something funny and he'll handle it from there. Check. Anything else? Actually, yes. We did save one line from the script and it's really important to work it in because it's the product placement that pays for the whole show. One of you will have to save the line. Me, me, pick me! All right, Max. Your line is this. Better get the serious toothpaste. I like it already. There's a lot to learn with this TV business. Give me the lowdown on the show one more time. Midtown Cowboys is about two cattle ranchers raising a herd in a Manhattan apartment that has a strict no-cows policy. Your basic visual hijinks and occasional gross-out humor ensue as they concoct elaborate ruses to keep their cow hidden from their landlord, Mr. Featherly. Can we take five? The Screen Actors Guild will break my knuckles if I say no, so go ahead. Look, Max, there's the door to Myra's set. Let's get in there and liberate her literally captive audience. Sam, forget the hostages. There's somebody famous. It's Hugh Bliss. Who, Bliss? No, you, Bliss. Inventor of prismatology? Help millions unlock the power of their personal color spectrums? Right. The stage magician turned happiness guru. Like we didn't have enough of those already. I want to meet him. Fine. But if he magically pulls another rainbow butterfly out of somebody's ear, I'm leaving. Hi, Hugh Bliss! Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Yeah, we know. And you are Sam and Max, freelance police. <gasps> How do you know? Do you believe in magic? Cause I do! So, Hugh Bliss, what brings you to WARP? I, too, am here to meet Myra. <gasps> How do you know we came for Myra? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, don't you see? I can read your mind. As the resident Doubting Thomas of this crime-fighting duo, I consider it my civic duty to say, prove it. Okay, think of something, anything. 6,373,411.98 Sam? Lucky guess. Was it? Think of something else. Pennies on the eyes of a dead mime. Well? I must have been silently mouthing the words. Really? Think of something else. <laughs> Hugh Bliss is a big fat charlatan. Was he right? Big deal. Everyone thinks that. Oh? Think of something else. <laughs> Enough of this ridiculous farce! Stop it! <laughs> do me! Do me! Oh! Oh my! And that's unspeakably depraved! Yeah, you got it! Wow, you're amazing! What's your business with Myra? I'm to be a guest on her show, silly! Yeah, silly! I'm spreading the word about my new book, Emetics, the handbook for multicolored happiness. Take a copy when you leave. Can you just give us the ten-word summary instead? We're on a pretty tight schedule. Ten words? Oh my! How about prismatology is the answer? Unicorns are pretty, and rainbows too. That's ten. What's the story on this prismatology flapdoodle? Prismatology is only the greatest intellectual, emotional, and spiritual revolution ever to grace this fair planet. Thank goodness we have someone who can give an impartial assessment. Shh! 
Tell us more. Join Prismatology today, and you too can experience the magic of true bliss. That goes against everything I've ever hoped for, and yet now I'm strangely attracted to the notion. Snap out of it, little buddy. We've got a case to solve. Sorry to interrupt your little joy fest, but I've got a situation here. Never fear, pretty lady. Hugh Bliss is... Yeah, yeah. Anyway, our game show host went on Myra hours ago, and he still hasn't come out. Think you can fill in till he gets back? Can a butterfly fly? Yes, it can. Oh, what do I do? When a contestant comes to the podium, just read him a question from the car. Then, when he gets it wrong, insult him and tell him to get off the stage. Oh, no, no. Prismatology teaches us to love everyone, no matter what. Right, just read the cards. Okay. We still love you. <sighs> it's polite to knock. You do know we're taping a show here. Great day in the morning. It's Myra Stump herself! Yourself. How about letting your hostages go now? What do you say? Hostages? They're my guests. You know, if there's one that fries my burger, it's the rampant victim culture in American media today. Oh, boo-hoo! Myra's audience all got luxury minivans. Now they have to worry about where they're going to park. Ah! I know what you mean, Myra. It's like I'm always telling people, don't think of it as a bullet wound. Think of it as a transfusion opportunity. Seriously, we're officers of the law, more or less, and we'll have to insist that you free the hostages. Of course. Just as soon as the show's over. And when is that exactly? Oh, who can say? We still have so many gifting opportunities. I just found a year's supply of industrial strength soap backstage. I think I'll give that away. Or else have a valuable lesson on curing potty mouth. Your eyes look a little spirally. Are you feeling all right? Of course I am, sweetheart. By the way, when was the last time you brushed your teeth? And you should really be flossing. You certainly sound like your normal self. But why are you keeping everybody in there? I'm just doing what I always do. Slave and toil to put on the best show possible. It's just, after opening presents from well-wishers, I felt so compelled to make this show extra special. Don't be alarmed. But I'm beginning to suspect that you might be hypnotized. Don't be silly. Hypnotism is just an excuse people use today to abdicate responsibility. I hate how this country's become a bushel of Bill and Betty brainwashies. Hypnotized or not, that sounds like Myra's patented blend of lovingly cutting criticism and charismatic know it all -tree. Are you sure you're not hypnotized? Of course not. I'm just inspired, and even more so than usual. Can we come in and see the show? Can you? Don't you mean... Uh, may we come in and see the show? That's much better. No, we're at full capacity. The only people getting in now are famous people who are appearing on the show. Can't... may we appear as guests on your show? I excel at talking about myself! Are you famous? Perhaps. In an internet petition or there ought to be a law kind of way. Not good enough. I'll need evidence of your explosive star power. I blew up a public restroom last week. I want to see a copy of your recording contract, for one thing. Well, what if we... Recording, contract, and a clip from your hit TV show. You're not anybody these days if you don't act and sing. Recording contract, TV clip. Piece of cake. No cake. I'm on a diet. But I will naturally need evidence of the latest juicy scandal you've been involved in. We have to be scandalized? Of course! What kind of show do you think this is? Are you sure you want us to answer that? Look, it's very simple. Show me a recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a scandal, and I'll squeeze you in. Oh, is that all? I'm gonna go get my autograph book. We'll be right back. It's too nice to stay indoors. You boys should go play outside. And you should stop making that face, dear. It'll stick if you're not careful. What face? Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Dazzle us with a feat of ledger domain, why don't you? Okay, I'll show you the magic of prismatology in action. Pick a color, any color. Ochre, ochre! No, mauve! 
Bird Sienna! Uh, how about a color I've heard of, hmm? Pick a color, as long as it's red, green, or blue. It's not easy being green. Oh, but it is with magic! Ah, I know what you're thinking. Is it real or is it illusion? Say, you Bliss, can we get a picture with you for our scrapbook of instantly forgettable memories? Splendid idea. I wish I'd thought of it. Oh, and in fact, I did. He, hence the camera. Now gather round. But how will you take the picture? By magic. Okay. Say, chocolate-covered puppies. Chocolate-covered chocolate -covered puppies. puppies. So where's the picture, Magic Man? Oh, my. I seem to have misplaced it. Hmm. Check your pockets. Maybe I left it there. <laughs> Bye. how you can sing and be a judge. I don't think the public would swallow that. Hey, Sam, do my eyes deceive me, or are those our formerly hypnotized former child star acquaintances, the soda poppers? Sweet jellyfish paste on a stick, you're right. What are the odds? Could we find another judge? What about one of those guys? Hmm, I don't suppose either of you would be interested in being a judge on Embarrassing Idol, the hot new show where we make uncomfortable entertainment out of people's misplaced faith in their own singing ability. Oh, me, me! I promise I'll be completely unbiased in my abuse of the contestants. Fine, fine. Take a seat. Goody! I get to sing! Welcome back to Embarrassing Idol. The judges are chomping at the bit, so say hello to our first contestant, Peepers. <clears throat> Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Well, that was a bit sloppy, but I particularly like how you hit that high note. That always impresses me. I think you'll get my vote. I'm definitely voting for you. After all, you are my brother. Very impressive. You sound almost exactly like a sick cat being dragged through rusty farm machinery. But this is a singing contest, so I think I'll have to vote for someone else. Um, is there anyone else? Not so far. Yay! Hey, can I try my pipes out on this thing? Go right ahead. Frankly, we can use all the contestants we can muster. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Bottleneck on the Freeway of Doom. <coughs> May the starfish justice not impugn. Thinking about the rings on the great racket. Blowing like a zephyr on a dune. And let's hear from our judges. Bravo! Your wobbly tenor is way better than Peeper's shrill squawking. Your stylings are quite interesting, but I noticed you never really hit a high note. Peeper's is still getting my vote. You sing beautifully, and your lyrics are enchanting. But Peeper's is my brother, so I pretty much have to vote for him. Oh. Remember, folks, on Embarrassing Idol, the decision of the judges must be unanimous. Stay tuned for more exciting action after this. And we're cut. It's okay to sing again if you want to, by the way. Could improve your chances. Judge looks good on you, Max. Thanks! I hope it comes with lunch. 
Any advice about your fellow judges? Well, word around the local judging circles is that Spex is a sucker for a really high note. But Wizard? I don't know. I don't think you're going to be able to get him to change his vote. Well, perhaps I can deal with him some other way. Don't let your passion for overzealous criticism get in the way of our primary goal here, little pal. I already forgot what that is. Myra Stump, holding the audience hostage? Oh, right. Sometimes my sponge is a little leaky. A fact I know all too well. I think I'll poke around and look for clues, or craft services crawlers, or both. If you poke up some crawlers, I want six. Last time we saw you, you and your diminutive former child star brothers were in the thrall of a megalomaniac hypnotist with bad hair. What have you been up to since then? Well, after you hit us over the head, repeatedly, our careers have taken an upswing. Clearly. Hey, being a judge on Embarrassing Idol is a tremendous opportunity. I'm feeling the magic already. What can you tell me about this contest you're judging? Not much to tell. People sing, we judge them. You want to know more, ask the director. We judges don't have to concern ourselves with operational detail. Tell me about the criteria you use in judging a singing contest such as this one. I'm a stickler for technical proficiency. Usually I look for a high note. Someone who can hit a really high note always impresses me. I see. If you'll excuse me, I've got some lines to color outside of. It's your life. Tell me, old judge, what gruesome qualities do you look for in a singing performance? Fraternity! I'm voting for Peepers no matter what! He's my brother! The one who didn't forget my birthday today, I might add! I said I was sorry! Happy birthday! Thanks! I'm glad somebody remembered! I said I was sorry! What more do you want? A treat would be nice! Isn't this also St. Boniface Day? Patron saint of carnivorous plants and spiky things? I think that's next week. What kind of perks go with this gig? Do you get fancy dressing rooms and candy sorted by color? Ooh, craft services food! Have them bring me a roasted Canada goose stuffed with lightly bruised olives, please. Not likely. I ordered a cake for my birthday, but they never brought it. I think the craft services crew all went in to watch the Myra show, like everybody else. All we got was a basket of tomatoes! Ugh. What kind of preposterously un-American weasel are you that you don't like tomatoes? I like them just fine, but they don't like me. What do you mean? I once spent 12 hours in the bathroom after mistakenly eating a cucumber that was sitting next to a tomato on the plate. Say no more. Can you eat those little cherry tomatoes? They're small. No! No tomatoes, tomato juice, tomato paste, nothing, or I'll be out of commission for hours. Enjoy your judging. Catch you later. Uh-huh. So, Wizard's birthday is today, huh? See? Some people pay attention to these things. Oh, come on. I already said I was sorry for forgetting. I confess I don't really understand how you could forget Wizard's birthday. I mean, aren't you guys triplets? Technically, yes. Happy birthday! Yeah, yeah! If you'll excuse me, I've got some lines to color outside of. It's your life! Hi. Hi. You got this stage set up awfully fast. You must have an army of minions to do your bidding. <sighs> No, it's pretty much just me. I used to have a stagehand, but she went to watch the Myra show. All the more impressive, then. Sawing the hole in the floor was the hard part. What can you tell me about the show you're shooting here? Embarrassing Idol, Standard Drill, amateur singers with collusions of ability perform in front of a camera. Judges heckle them, and the public gets sick pleasure out of watching the carnage. 
Can you give me some kind of insight into the arcane workings of the judging? It's pretty simple. All the judges have to agree on a winner. That's all there is to it. What kind of arbitrary criteria do they use to make their decisions? That's up to the individual judges. I channel the spirit of Hammurabi, the ancient Babylonian ruler. Then I pick you, Sam. Thanks, little buddy. What allegedly valuable prize is bestowed on the lucky winner? The winner gets a standard exploitation recording contract with a major label. If you're going to be exploited, be exploited by the best. That seems clear. Thank goodness. What's it like working with the soda poppers? Oh, the usual. They prance around to make unreasonable demands, but they knuckle under because they're desperate to be working at all. Same as the rest of us, really. Your bleak outlook is oddly refreshing. Well, I'm sure you're very busy. You got that right. Well, well. Peepers, you underdeveloped former non-psychotherapist you. What a treat to run across you again. I'm not sure if I ever properly thanked you for hitting me over the head recently. Repeatedly. No gratitude necessary. Just doing our jobs. Sure. How do you manage to hit those eardrum scarring high notes? If you're implying that I use any artificial vocal enhancements, I don't. What you hear is pure peepers. That's almost exactly what I would have said. Really, is there any trick to hitting the high notes like you do? Look, I told you, I don't use any artificial vocal enhancement, and I resent the implication. I have a gift, that's all. Your lyrics have an intriguingly vapid quality. Did you write them yourself? Of course! Any similarity to lyrics from other wildly popular songs is meant as homage, not theft. I'm dying to know. Is there any truth to the rumors about lip-syncing on the old Soda Poppers TV show? We only did that on the released version. I'll leave you to whatever it is you're doing over here. Good luck! Can I look at these? Sure, take them! I've got them memorized! Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Very impressive. Is that your mug? No, it was here when I got here, last week. Ew. We're as ready as we're ever gonna be. Let's start taping the show. Okay, now remember, your landlord's at the door, and you don't want him to know you've got a cow in there. Ready? Action! They probably had it a cow. Open up in there! I know you're Let there be a light. cow! Hey! Open up! There we go. Life Open of the party. Up in there. Aha! I know you've got a. Well, well, well. Who's your guest, boys? This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck a la <laughs> And frog's legs. I like mine extra crispy. Oh! A French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know. It was back in my army day. Goodness, who left this lying here? I miss the 70s when you could get away with stuff like that.
Say, what's this? <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that you said? He said Mugu Gaipan. It's a French dish the chef has just made. Oh, super! I'll try some of that. Where's the plate? I can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. Interesting. That's one word for it. Hmm. There's a familiar flavor. Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. <laughs> this moo moo whatever stuff is really good. What's it called in English? Cow pie. Really? Well, that's funny. It sounds just like. <laughs> Now? Now. <clears throat> Better get the serious toothpaste. Zoom in. And cut. That was comic cool. The network is going to love it. Naturally. I'll be in my dressing room refreshing my muse. Don't call me for at least an hour. Nice work, you guys. Here's a clip for your reel. Thanks. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. That's enough lard to clog the arteries of a major metropolis. Or start a circus of grease squirrels. I rue the day you lost your NEA funding, Max. What's the story with this show? Cooking Without Looking? It's a cooking show aimed at motorhead bachelors who have never seen the inside of a grocery store. Is there a big demand for that? You'd be amazed. Where's the host? Is he in watching the Myra show? No, he's one of the few who isn't. He got food poisoning while he was taping last week's show. Right in the middle, in fact. Was it gruesome? Yes, and unfortunately, this show goes out live. Can we get a tape of the show? This one? No, it's broadcast live. We don't tape it. How do you do that teleportation trick where you're always everywhere ahead of us? Trade secret, honey. How do you keep it so clean in here? The complete absence of anything resembling food is helpful. Aren't there fruits or vegetables of any sort around here? Just the crew. Ha! I never get tired of that one. Okay, actually, no. We strive for realism, and the average bachelor kitchen doesn't contain any natural plant life except mold. See ya. Probably. This fridge isn't even a fridge. It's a fake. Welcome to Cooking Without Looking, the cooking show for the typical bachelor kitchen, containing no fruits, vegetables, or healthy ingredients of any sort. The show where we take a random assortment of condiments and barely edible items and create a meal within minutes. Filling in for Chuck Flagon this week, these guys. Just go with it. Oh, um, hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. It's great to be here. Not you, Buckethead. The audience. Oh, greetings, worshipful fans. Remember, the only reason I'm on TV is because I'm better than you. We've got some furious cooking to do, so let's get right to it. What are we making, Sam? Today we're baking a cake. Let's visit our rack of ingredients and add flavoring to the flavoring pail. I'm pretty sure that's a pot, Sam. Max, let's leave the cooking to me and the eating to you. A fistful of squid tentacles. That's my favorite western. A pinch or two of wombat secretions. Make sure they're lightly damp to the touch. The wombats, not the secretions. A handful or two of buffalo chips. You really can't add too many buffalo chips. You want to use the sulfuric acid sparingly. It can easily overwhelm the other ingredients. And your taste buds, and your esophagus. Of course, you're going to want a few dashes of hair gel. 
Don't worry, bachelors. As long as you use it only for cooking, no one will think you less of a man. Every chef has a signature ingredient that no one has ever heard of or used. Mine's MSG. If you put in enough that you feel a burning sensation in the back of the neck, forearms, and chest, you're just about there. Can we say enough about roofing tile shards? Obviously we can. A dash of pink mink oil is a must. Nothing says, I last ate real food in the 80s like the inclusion of something pink. Of course, it wouldn't be real bachelor cooking without tweed. Bachelors, here's a tip. Tweed isn't just for cooking, it also makes a great toupee. No more than a dash of uranium pellets. They also go great in Chex Mix. You'll want to crush up some dried dingo kidney. Come on, bachelors, you know you have them. Look under the sofa cushions. Of course, who can forget the asbestos sprinkles? This stuff isn't just for school lunches, real kitchens use it too. Don't skimp on the lard. That's right, if you take the lard out of lard ass, all you have is ass. Well said, Max. Every meal has to include some of the standards, like monk paste. Don't forget that saying, monk paste for the taste, hope fest for the zest. Make sure to include red dye number two. If there's not at least some possibility of malignant tumors, it's not real bachelor cooking. Now do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And, through the magic of TV cooking show time, one gorgeous, delicious cake. Ready to be binged upon or shared amongst friends. Oh boy, let's take it with us. So how does this game show work? Did you just ask me how a game show works? Uh... A contestant comes to the podium, the host reads them a question, they get it wrong, and they leave. Just one question? More time for commercials that way. Look over there. It's Myra. <gasps> Where? It's written right above the door. I don't have time for this. See you later. That's a wrap. We've got a contestant, people! Hit it! From somewhere deep within the bowels of WARP, it's Who's Never Going to Be a Millionaire! With special guest host, Hugh Bliss! Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Our first contestants are a pair of professional freelance police officers. They enjoy firing their guns randomly and running over things. Please welcome Sam and Max! Listen, Sam, they love us! Welcome! You know the rules. If you can answer even one question correctly, you'll walk away a millionaire! Start loading the armored cars, Hugh, because my brain's stuffed with enough worthless trivia to power a small Chilean village for decades. It's true! Okay, are you ready? Oh, happy day. It's an easy one! If a man sets out from the Horsehead Nebula in a spaceship traveling at thrice the speed of light and his father leaves from Rigel 2 at the same time going half the speed, how many nanoseconds will it be before time paradox causes the first man never to have been born? I'm not sure, but I'll say false. That's not really a valid answer. You lose! This is an outrage! I demand a recount! We do have a fabulous consolation prize. A copy of Emetics by me, Hugh Bliss! No thanks. I'm content to leave with just my burning shame and newfound sense of inadequacy. Okay! Find out which poor schmuck will be the next to blow his chance at millions right after these messages.
Hey, a perfect fit. That's where I'd stand if I were the host, which I'm not. We've got another contestant. Hit it! Welcome back. Our next contestants are these guys again. Okay, are you ready? Hmm. The question is, am I blue? No, Hugh, you're not blue. Oh dear! Oh me, oh my! That's absolutely right! Yes. Congratulations! You're a We're rich! Filthy rich! We just went bankrupt, so we will not be back after these messages. I don't believe it. Well, this is awkward, but we don't actually have a million in cash. Sweet mother of all quiz show scandals. We'll have to give you a million dollars worth of food stamps. They're right over there. Hold on. Can you buy deep-fried licorice rubs with food stamps? We'll take it. One, two, three, one hundred seventy-four, one hundred seventy-five, nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. And a million. Let's go spend it, Sam. It's burning a hole in my pocket. It's putting quite a bulge in mine. Sam, this is perfect. This photo is a capstone. It succinctly summarizes over 30 years of extraterrestrial-related photographic evidence. Sybil, that photo is a hoax. Exactly. I couldn't have asked for better. Now I can print the paper. Available at newsstands now. America to day three and a half of my most special episode ever. You don't want to miss any of our exciting guests coming up this hour. Plus, everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non-dairy crema. Help us! We're famous. Hooray! Can we begin misbehaving now? Begin? It's Sam and Max. I saw you on the telly. How do you watch TV from in there? I've got monitors you don't even know about. Hello, sir. What ho, old bee? 
We want to buy something. Quite so! We come bearing one million American dollars. Now hand over the voice modulator. Blimey! Food stamps! I suppose I must accept them. Hope the dash government conspiracy. It's hogwash! Complete codswallop! Here then is your chemical-based voice modulator. This is a helium balloon strapped to an inhaler. But it works! Trust me, trust me! Holy chipmunk, Ari is warbling out of a souped-up 78-speed turntable. It works! Thanks, Bosco! A little ketchup is always good on a cake. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Happy birthday! Oh boy! Birthday cake! That red frosty looks tasty! Excuse me. Boy, that was really, uh, uh, really, uh, 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 time out for number two. What? What the darn it? He better not be going to see Myra. Well, anyway, we can't wait. We'll just have to finish the show with only two judges. Whatever you guys agree on goes. Vote for me. Testing. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Love has a thorny backside. <coughs> Shiny like a new Mylar balloon. She's the headline, page one, the Tribune. And so I wrote this extremely catchy tune. And let's hear from our judges. I admire your courage even more than your singing. You've still got my vote. Thanks, little buddy. You really nailed that high note. Whoa! And you're less sloppy than my brother is. You got my vote. Hey! All of the remaining judges have agreed. We have a winner. No. Congratulations, Sam. Here's your recording contract. Ben Bottom Records. It's like a dream come true. Specs, I'll get you for this if it's the last thing I do. Right after I get back from Mount Rushmore. Rushmore? I'd better go after him. I just remembered. I have to feed my goldfish. Are we still taping? Uh, be sure to join us next time on Embarrassing Idol. Yes? Oh, you two again. 
Well, what is it? You've got the length of one commercial break to explain yourself. Remind me what your requirements are for guests on your show? Of course, dear. I'll need to see your recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a juicy scandal. What if we have our own video game? Video games? Ugh, those things will ruin your eyes. They're awful. We do have a recording contract. In Bottom Records. Take a look. Now how about having us appear on your show? Not so fast. To get on my stage, you'll also need a clip from your own TV show as well as evidence of a good scandal. Fame is a distressingly exact mistress. There you go, dear. Although I strongly disapprove, having a mistress is an excellent stock to a scandal. The public enjoys a good love triangle. Actually, we graced the cover of the current edition of the Alien Love Triangle Times. How's that for a scandal? Goodness. Well, all you need to do is get a clip from your own TV show, and I'll let you be on mine. Ooh, then we can return the favor and you can be on ours. Unfortunately, I'm too busy to laugh derisively at that offer, but remind me to do so later. As it happens, we brought a clip of our wacky hit sitcom, Midtown Cowboys. We're the stars. You'll have us on your show now, yes? Oh, I suppose so. If only as a starting point for examining the deleterious vacuousness of today's entertainment. Yay! Naturally, I will expect you to be on your best behavior and agree with everything I say and answer every question I have and don't interrupt and keep your elbows off the table and use your indoor voice. What about... While you're on my show, you stay in your seats at all times. You do not interrupt me when I'm talking and you treat the audience with the utmost respect, even if you become less sure with each passing year that they deserve it. Now, I'll call you on stage in a minute. Gosh, Max. Celebrity is just a never-ending set of arbitrary goals one accomplishes to appease a dismissive and distracted, if not entirely absent, authority figure. I don't know if I agree, Sam, but I've begun my decadent slide into a depraved personal hell just in case. Give her a hand, everyone! Bessie Bobine reading from her new book, The Heart Has Four Stomachs, Ruminations on a Life in Hollywood. Out now in all major bookstores. This microphone is starting to spark from overuse, but that doesn't mean we're ready to pack it in. We've got the stars of the not-quite-canceled sitcom Midtown Cowboys, who also happen to be the winner and judge of TV's Embarrassing Idol. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam and Matt. Hold the hayride, little pal. That bear seems more than slightly hinky, in the mesmeric sense of the term. Shadier than a fat man's ankles. Let's take it down like ducks in a gutter. Hold it! My guests sit at that end! But that bear has got you... Sit! We'll just sit where you want us to, ma'am. Lovely. What gives, Sam? Why can't we just grab the bear? It would appear that the laws of physics are different on the set of a talk show, little buddy. You're gonna have to play along. Sam and Max, you talented, hot new celebrities who've taken the entertainment world by storm. So naturally, we all want to hear everything about your involvement in the scandal detailed in the Alien Love Triangle Times. I'd rather talk about our smash hit sitcom, Midtown Cowboys. Okay, let's talk. You two have become the new breakout stars of a flaccid, dissolute sitcom in its final days. How wonderful for you. Thanks. We brought a clip. You certainly did. I had a chance to watch it, and I refused to show it to my audience. It has a shocking joke involving a cow pie. It's a sad commentary on today's culture when the cow pie, once a staple of the American diet, blah, 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 yak, 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 yak. I see why Myra only lets big stars on her show. They're easier targets? If you're big enough, there still might be something left when she's finished. Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. I'd like to sing a song from my upcoming album, Feathers and Furious Scribbling. I'm almost certain the audience might probably enjoy that. Howling at that drippy old hunk of moon. She's at brunch today with some baboon. 
And so I wrote this extremely catchy tune. Thank you, Sam, for putting the numb back in musical number. What a wonderful way to remind our audience that you don't have to be talented to be famous. And a perfect segue into my latest tirade about the lamentable state of modern popular music. I mean, blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, yak, 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 yak. Blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, 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 yak, blah, 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 one, two, three, blah, 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 I'd like to sing, if I may. Is that wise? Howling at that thrifty old hunk of moon. Whoa, careful there, tiger. That was wonderful. I'm so moved, I almost don't have a long hectoring screed in me. Oh no, wait, there it is. Thank goodness. Self-referential songwriting is a dangerously blah, 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 yak, 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 yak. Blah, 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 yak. <clears throat> ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. There's something you should know about that picture in the Times. I'm not sure I want to know anything more. Maybe you big Hollywood types thinks it's funny to flaunt your polyplanetary pickups, but the rest of us find alien love triangles, frankly, disgusting. But the photo is not quite what it seems. How so? It doesn't tell the whole story. There's someone else involved. Someone the picture doesn't show. How shocking. Who? Bessie Bovine, our co-star on Midtown Cowboys. Oh my! Audience, shall we bring her back out again? At the risk of making the obvious comment, that was shocking! Is she breathing? A little. But the creepy teddy bear is toast. Nuts! I wanted to ask it a few questions, and maybe use it to hypnotize Katie Couric. Another glorious dream bangs its chin on the dirty pavement. On the bright side, the audience is free to go home. Oh, I was just getting warmed up. Do you think Myra will have us back on the show again soon? Um, speaking of unlikely, did you notice we just had two cases in a row involving hypnotic mind control? Complete coincidence? Yes, I think so. The cogs of the universe synchronize in ways we're not meant to see. Speaking of things we're not meant to see, there's a new restaurant at the zoo where you can eat what they feed the animals. Empty popcorn cartons and cigarette butts. And processed bread logs loaded with tranquilizers and antidepressants. Bread logs make me bogey. Let's head back to the cooking show set and see if we can figure out how to make fried pork rinds. Okay, but I get the feet. <laughs> 